string view. If you have a function that takes a string parameter that it doesn't want to change or take the ownership of, you're probably used to set its type to a constant reference of a string. In this video, you will see why it's preferred not to use this and instead use something called a string view, which is much faster and more efficient. In order to understand what a string view is, let's look at this example. Suppose I have a C style string C that has this message. This is a test. If you assign C to an object of type string, what happens is that the constructor of this string will do some heap allocation and basically copies all of these characters inside its own memory location. So basically, we will have a copy of all of these characters inside this C style string. However, if we do the same thing with a string view, there's not going to be a copying. Instead, string view references, internally references, the same buffer of our C style string. Basically, internally, it has a pointer. And when you do this assignment, the constructor assigns the value of this pointer to the beginning of the same C style string. And then it also has a size and sets the size to the size of this string. So this way, we avoided this heap allocation. Instead, we just reference the same buffer inside this class, which acts as a wrapper around our C style string that has a pointer and a size. Now let's go back to our function that takes a constant reference to a string. If I have a function like this, I can call this function with a parameter of type string. S here is defined as a string. And whenever I pass this parameter to str here, because it's a reference, there's not going to be a copy. So this way, by passing by reference, I'm avoiding an extra copy. However, if I call the same function with a C style string, I can still do this. But what happens is that as soon as I call this function, the constructor of std string here will construct a new constant string and it does heap allocation and it copies this buffer inside this newly created string. And this has extra cost. Using a constant reference to a string, we do have this flexibility to call the function using either a C++ string or a C style string. However, when you do C style string, you have to pay heap allocation and the cost of extra copy. Now, if you change this parameter to a string view, you could still call this function using a string. There's still not going to be any heap allocation. This string view works just like a thin wrapper around the string. So we still have the same flexibility that we had before. However, when you call this function with a C style string, again, this string view acts as a thin wrapper around our C style string. There's not going to be heap allocation. There's not going to be copying. Therefore, it's much more efficient to modify this to a string view rather than string. And that's basically where string view takes its name from because a string view is a thin wrapper. It's really just a view to our original. This by itself doesn't have any new data, doesn't have any heap allocation. It's just a view to our original data. And this concept is kind of similar to pointers because as we said, string view can be implemented using a pointer and a size that points to the original. And therefore we call this a view to the original. And because it's just a view, that means if I change the original, the view should also change. So let's take a look at this example. First, I define my original a C style string. Then I create a copy of type string. And then I create an object of type string view and I pass C to its constructor. Next, I modify the original. So when I print C, S and SV, I expect C to be changed. I expect SV, the string view, to also change. However, S, which is just a copy, should not change. This is my output, the original changed. S is a copy, so when you modify the original, S doesn't change because it's a string. However, SV is just a view. Therefore, because I changed the original, the view, which is a thin wrapper around the original, also changes. Another thing that you need to know about string view is that if you create a string view and then copy that string view to another string view, now you will have two views to the same original. That means if I change the original, both views should change. So in our example here, when I modify the original, I print my original, I print the string copy and I print SV1 and SV2. And what we see is that both SV1 and SV2 have changed because these are just views to our original. So what you need to take away is that all views change if the original change and copying the view is a shallow copy. So we mentioned that string view internally has a pointer and a size, but how do we really pass the size? So if you have a C style string, there's not an explicit size information. Instead, in C, all strings are terminated with a null character at the end. 
And that can implicitly give us the size information. Basically, if you have a pointer to a character buffer, you can start from that pointer and go all the way and move forward until you find a non-terminating character. And this is basically what the string view constructor has to do. Once you pass C1 to the constructor of SV1, it has to scan this C style string until it finds a non-terminating value and assign its internal size information. And please remember that this will take some time. Scanning this string will take some time, which is which, which basically has the time complexity of on and being the size of this string. However, you can avoid this extra time for finding the size if you explicitly pass the size here. So if I have an array of characters that are not terminating with a null character, I can still create a string view and pass this c2, this array, to the constructor. However, I can also pass the size and as an explicit value. Now, because the constructor has the size, it doesn't have to scan this array. So this would be constructed much faster than sv1. So what you need to take away is that the constructor of string view can take the size either implicitly using non-terminating characters, or it can take it explicitly as an explicit parameter. We mentioned string view is more efficient, but how exactly efficient it is? In order to measure the difference, suppose I have a function that takes a constant reference to a string, and suppose I rewrite this function to take a string view instead of the constant reference. And all this function does is it returns the last character inside the given parameter. Now, in order to measure the times, first I measure the time of the call of this version of the function compared to the string view version of the function. Also, I repeat this when I pre-calculate the size and pass the size explicitly to the constructor instead of having the constructor calculating it by scanning the C style string and using the non-terminating value. So I would expect this to be the slowest speed and then this to be faster and this to be the fastest. I have measured the time of these three versions using Google Benchmark. If you want to know the details of Google Benchmark and how to use it, you're welcome to view my other video on Google Benchmark. Here, let's focus on the results. This shows the result of the first version using a constant reference to string. And as you can see, as I increase the size of the string that is passed to the parameter, the, the runtime of the constructor increases, and this increase is significant. However, when I move to a string view, the rate of the increase of the runtime is much better, much more efficient, but we still are paying some penalty for calculating the size. As we move to the final version, where I pass the size explicitly, you can see the constructor runs in almost zero time and its runtime is almost constant and doesn't change as I change the size of the string. So the moral of the story is that whenever you have a constant reference to a string, which is the cases that you don't want to change that string or take its ownership, it's better to use a string view. It would be much faster for the cases that you are passing the parameter with a C-style string. And then as you do this, if you already know the length of this string, you could pass that as an explicit parameter to the constructor. This way, you will save the constructor from scanning this string for finding the null terminating character. So the runtime of this call would be very negligible and is constant. Similar to dangling pointers, you have to make sure you don't create dangling views. For example, here I'm creating a dynamic character array C2 that consists of character A followed by the null terminating character. And then I create string view out of it. Once I print my string view, I see the result correctly being the character A printed. However, if I go ahead and delete C2, after this point, SV is really pointing to a location that is deleted. This is called a dangling view. Basically, SV is a view to something that is not valid anymore. Now, after this point, using SV will create undefined behavior. For example, here I do some more dynamic memory allocation, and then I insist on printing SV one more time. As you can see, SV is now having a different value from what it had in the beginning, which was a view to A. And this is undefined behavior. This is invalid, and you have to make sure you don't create cases like this. And in general, you have to make sure the original should outlive the view. So we mentioned a string view is really a view to the original, but you also need to know that a view can change. What do I mean by this? So if you create a view to a C style string, string view class provides two methods, remove prefix and remove suffix. And basically what these do, the first one removes the first characters from the view, and the second one, the remove suffix, removes the last characters from the view. So here, when I print the view after removing two characters from the beginning, I get this, and when I remove two characters from the end, I get this. However, when I print the original, the original still stays the same. The original doesn't change. And this can simply be implemented by modifying the pointer and the size. And basically, when I remove the prefix, for example, all it needs to be done is to modify and increment the pointer to point to a little bit further in the buffer. And doing this doesn't change the original. So what you need to take away is that modifying the view does not change the original. 
Now, if I have a string view, can I convert it back to a C style string? We have seen before, if you have a C++ string, you can, you can use this method, C underscore str, to get a C style string, to get an equivalent C style null terminating string that represented this original string. You can do something similar in string view by calling its data method. And this works, once you call this, it will return a C style string. However, you have to be careful that data will return a valid C style string only if the view hasn't been modified and the original is already a null terminating C style string. Otherwise, this wouldn't work. This shows the case where we modify the original and remove the null terminating character. And once you print data, because the null terminating character doesn't exist, you will see some garbage at the end of the string. And this one shows if you take the view, modify the view, and then print data, you will see something that is not expected. So, so just remember that data is valid only if the view hasn't been modified and the original is not terminating. Let's quickly look at some other methods that string view provides. You get your familiar SDL methods like brackets, add, front, and rest. You get some methods that are very similar to string class from C++ like substr, compare, and we already talked about remove prefix, remove suffix. And there's this last one, which is a swap, which basically swaps two views with each other. So if S1 is a view to A's and S2 is a view to B's, when I swap S1 and S2, after that S1 would be a view to B's and S2 would be a view to A. Let's quickly summarize what we learn about string view. So as a general rule of thumb, use string view instead of const string and a constant reference to a string. And you usually do this when you want to pass a parameter that you don't want to change and you don't want to take the ownership. Remember that the view does not own the data and the original should outlive the view. So you have to make sure you don't have dangling views. And lastly, notice that all over this video, we used string view and passed it by value. We didn't use a constant in front of the string view or we didn't use a reference. And because this is just a very thin wrapper, it just has a pointer and a size, you don't really need to pass it by reference. And because this is just a view to the original, you cannot change the original. You don't really need to put a constant in front of it. And that's it. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching this video. I hope this was useful to you. Please go ahead and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to my channel. And hopefully I'll see you in the next videos.